Hello and welcome to the second video in the series of EG168 MATLAB videos. This video provides an introduction to vectors and matrices in MATLAB. So to start, a vector is a 1D array which can be formed as a row. So let's give an example. A row vector would look something like this. You should be aware that when you are typing a row vector into MATLAB, you would have it in brackets and you would separate it either using spaces or commas in order to get it to form the row. Now a column vector on the other hand would look something like this. So column vector would look like and we'll make it 1 to 5 again or we're going to be here a little while I'm afraid. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and finally 5. Now in addition to 1D arrays we also have 2D arrays and these are known as matrices. For example, let's show you a 3 by 4 matrix. So 3 by 4 matrix, just call, we'll keep it lowercase. Just to remind you that in MATLAB, you have to make sure that you always are consistent in whether or not you use a capital letter or a lowercase letter since it is case sensitive. So let's give you a 3 by 4 one. So 2. Five, four, five, six, seven, and nine, eight, five, four. Okay, so that is a three by four matrix. So when you're specifying the number, you start with the number of rows and then the number. Of columns. So if you were to produce these in MATLAB they would look like the following. So let's go on to MATLAB now and let's start with a row vector. So we can call this vector1. Let's do this so we will separate it using commas. Two, three, four, five and here is a simple row vector. And then if we wanted to make a column vector instead, we would separate the index indices, so the numbers, using semicolon. So let's make vector 2. You should also note you can't use spaces, which I'm normally tempted to do, but make sure you don't do that or your code will not work. Let's make a nice little column vector. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. Five. Okay, it does work. There you have a nice little column vector. Now, rather than typing every number individually, if we wanted to create, say, a row vector starting at 1 and ending at 10 and going up in increments of 1, we would type in the following. So let's make this vector 3. That can be equals to. 1 to 10 in increments. Ooh. As I said, be careful what you type. To 10 in increments of 1. And there you have it. Or if we wanted to create a row vector starting at 2 and going up in steps of 4 up until, say, 18, we would use the following notation. So we can call this vector 4. Ooh. Let's give it lowercase for simplicity. And so we would have that from 2 to 18 going up in increments of 4. And there we have it. Some other examples from the worksheet look at additional ways of making vectors with the following formats. So let's use some of the ones directly from the sheet. I'm going to have to write them out so you don't see me flicking through, but you are more than welcome to copy and paste them in to save you time. So make sure you get the cases correct and nice and consistent. So this one is power. 
in DH. And that equates, oops, that's incorrect. There we go, in BHP, which equates to a row vector of 295, 650, 1183, 500. There we go. So that's a nice simple one in a, using the same technique that we used earlier. But rather than typing out every single number one after the other, you could, well this way is actually slightly more time consuming, but you could write it out with every one being done as a, another step. So, so let's make one for speed. So if we have speed in MPH, the first indice is equal 186. The second is equals equates to 192. Third, okay, let's be a bit lazier now. Let's drag this down. There we go. So the third equates to 268 and then the fourth yeah this is so much better equates to 202 there you have it yet another row vector but with every single index typed out individually there may be occasions where you want to do this however the previous method is quite a bit faster so only use it when appropriate and now let's have a look at the example for a column vector so this one is time from 0 to 60 once again make sure you don't have any spaces or we're going to have you'll have issues and that is in seconds and that equates to 4 semicolon 4.6 semicolon, 2.4, semicolon, and then 3.9. And there we have it. We can then find the size of a vector using the size command, which will return the size of the vector matrix in the stated row and column. In a similar way, you can also find the sum, the mean, the max, and the min values of the vector in a similar method. So, for example, let's make a new vector and call it, how many have we got now? Vector 5. Ooh, one sec, keep it lowercase. I just like everything to be the same, don't know why. So that can be vector 5 and that can equate to vector from 2 to 300 in steps of 0 0.45. shorts and brackets and up to 300 now we have quite a lot of indices in this so I would not really want to manually count this however it does say it anyway but it doesn't always according to the command you've given it so let's instead use the size command. Once again you can also use min max run so we'll try that next. So let's go size, let's drag cross vector 5 and that tells us that there are 1 rows and 663 columns. Quite a lot to count manually but let's do one which isn't specified so quite so much. Let's try what the maximum value is. So let's type in max and then drag across vector 5 again. And that tells us that the maximum value is 299.9. It's a lot easier than looking through it. And similarly, we can find the mean. So let's have a look at what the mean is. So mean of vector 5. And that is 
which could be very useful in some of your assignments if you're trying to analyze the data. So it's one to remember. Another way to produce vectors in steps using inbuilt functions is to use the line space. So let's give you an example of that. So let's uh, make y value and equate that to a uh, line space, so lin space from 1 to 9 in 5 evenly spaced steps. And there we have it. That's another quite useful way of doing it. However, yet another inbuilt function is the transpose function, which can convert a column vector into a row vector or a row vector into a column vector. And this can be done in two ways, with the second way I'll show you being slightly faster to type out. So um, let's create a new vector. Let's call this one vector6. And equate that to, well, nice, nice, simple string of numbers. So four, five, six. There we go. And let's transpose that. So let's call this one vector seven. And this is the first way to do it. So we type out transpose. And then we can either type in vector six, vector seven. We can either type out vector six or do what I prefer and drag it across. There we go, nicely transposed. Or to make it a lot faster, we can drag over vector seven and equate that now to vex six and instead of having to type out transpose we can just put in this little apostrophe which is substantially faster a lot easier and does exactly the same thing now if you wanted to identify a particular number within the vector known as the index or indices if plural we can use the following commands so if we wanted to identify the value which started in the third index, ah, started in the third index of the power vector, we would type in the following. So I can't bother to type it in. Actually, let's drag it across and then three. Let's go for the third one. And that is one, one, eight, three. Um, maybe we want to find the first index of time. So let's drag across time. And then we put in brackets one. That shows us that is four. However, indices can also be used to extract more than a single number. For example, if you wanted to find the first three values from time, we would type in the following. So drag across time. Then we want to go up to three. So one to three. And when we return it, it provides us with the values we want. Okay, so I think that's it for vectors. Let's now move on to matrices. We can design matrices in MATLAB using a string of rows with semicolons between them in order to show when you have the next column. So let's make a nice simple one. Let's call this matrix one. And that can be equated to a row of one, two, three. Four, separate the next row, five, six, seven, eight, separate the next row, nine, eight, seven, six, then we'll end that, which produces a three by four matrix. Like with vectors, we can also search for a particular index or indice, although this time you need to define both the row location and then the column location. So if we wanted to find the index in the first row and second column of this matrix, we would type in the following. So drag across matrix one, then first row, second column. And there we have it. Additionally, you should also be aware there are a few inbuilt matrix functions, such as the following. So if we wanted a matrix of zeros, we can type in this, so zeros, then x value, so 3 by y value 4. 
and that gives you a 3x4 matrix of zeros. We can also do the same for ones, so if we type in ones, 3x4, get the same for ones. Now, if we want to put in a matrix of uniformly distributed numbers, we would type in rand, so R A N D. Let's make this one 3 by 4 as well. And there you have it. Or you could also do the same for normally distributed numbers, where you type in rand n, then 3 by 4. Finally, if you want to create an x by x matrix of magic numbers, we could type in magic followed by the x value. So let's make that magic. And then let's go for 4. So there you have it. And that brings this video on introductions to vectors and matrices in MATLAB for EG168 to a close. The next video will be on using M files and plotting in MATLAB. Thank you for listening.